don't say it can't be done. The battle's just begun. Take it from Dr. King, you too can learn to sing, so drop the gun. Predictions of life continually surprise me. It thanks to selfish people who wanted to hire cheap workers that we have such a wonderfully diverse part of the world. My parents were what they call classical musicians, but I've been absolutely fascinated by the music of the southern states, whether they were Scotch-Irish people living in the mountains or African-Americans living in the cities or wherever. Let me get my banjo. My mother wanted to teach me uh, how to read music, but I said, no, mother, I just want to have fun. But she left instruments all around the house and uh, by the time I was five, I could pick out a tune on a piano or an organ or a penny whistle all by ear, and I knew what a minor chord and a major chord were. I didn't know the names. And then I was given a ukulele at age eight. And when I was at school, I'd pick out a tune I heard on the radio and get the kids around me singing it. Down in Alabama, 1955. Not everybody here today was then alive. A young Baptist preacher led a bus boycott. He showed a way for a brand new day without firing a shot. Don't say it can't be done. The battle's just begun. Take it from Dr. King, you too can learn to sing, so drop the gun. Although that chorus seems kind of complicated, I think I could teach it to you. Don't say it can't be done. The battle, the battle's just begun. Take it, take it from Dr. King, you too can learn to sing, so drop the gun. Now some people are singing good. A few have got their mouth tight closed, preserving their academic objectivity. <laughs> but this last verse has two words that need to be shouted. We will are the two words. You'll, you'll see where they come along. And you, everybody can shout. We sang about Alabama, 1955. But since September 11th, many wonder, will this world survive? But if the world learns the lessons from Dr. King, we can survive, we can, we will. I learned things from that extraordinary man, uh, Martin Luther King. I thought I knew all sorts of things, but boy, I learned things from him. My wife and I were invited to march from Selma to Montgomery, 40 miles in three days. It was raining half the time. Harry Belafonte was on the walk. He walked up and down the whole line, encouraging people from the front to the back. I knew Harry when he was 19 years old, pushing a truck in the Garment District in New York City. And he'd written a song and wanted me to publish it in a little, a tiny little newsletter we had called People's Songs. I want recognition as a man, that's all. 
I want recognition as a man. I want to put my shoulder to the wheel of freedom. Help it roll along. And I said, that's a good song, but you're a great singer. And I guess you know, I wasn't the only person who told him that within a year. He was singing all over, had a manager. <laughs> uh, I think the most important job I ever did, though, in my entire life was showing that musicians did not have to make a living singing in nightclubs or restaurants. I went from school to school to school, small schools first, then later on small colleges, and then later on larger colleges. <laughs> there was one big university I didn't sing to unless until the president retired, Brooklyn College. President Gideon C. says, as long as I am president of Brooklyn College, Seeger will not sing here. <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> but he retired and I did. I went and sung. <laughs> He sang for about 5,000 people, too. There's times to be small, there's times to be quiet, and there's times to be as loud as you can. We shall overcome. Ah, ah, ah. 